to address three pertinent issues relating to e-citizen uh, digital plat platform. Uh, and, and also, I will answer the other questions, but it is question 021 that I'm responding to. The Senator wanted to know what occasioned the failure by the e-citizen digital platform to process and reflect payments made to some institutions such as the National Health Insurance Fund, NHIF, and could the Cabinet Secretary also explain steps taken to remedy the situation? And uh, this is my response, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, payments to e-citizen platform are made in designated and defined formats. This format is defined in the system, and for any payment to succeed, it needs to follow the format expected by the system. For instance, if an NHIF member is paying for the monthly contribution, and the national ID number is, for example, 11223344, this is just an example of what could be an ID number, then the payment format to be keyed into the system will be NHIF M, 11, 22, Any payment which does not conform to this format will definitely be unsuccessful. Therefore, it is important for any person making any payment to follow the prescribed format so that the payment is successful on the platform. As part of the adoption, we always insist that any MGA on the e-citizen platform should train and sensitize its members or customers on the procedure of making payments on e-citizen platform. The National Treasury is working with ministries, departments, and agencies to create awareness, literacy on use of digital services, and sensitize the public on the use and adoption of the e-citizen digital platform. This is an ongoing exercise where periodic trainings and sensitization program are being conducted. On question number two, where the senator for Nairobi City County wanted to know, and actually this is the question, where does the convenience fee charged and all other payments that fail to reflect on the platform end up? And this is my response, Honorable Speaker. The e-citizen platform only collects convenience fee for successful transactions. When a user or citizen makes a payment, the payment will, uh, will be collected first by the payment service providers uh, providers channels which include mobile money for mobile network operators, RTGS and e-deposits for banks or wallets for non-bank um, payment service providers. So the e-money is then channeled to e-citizen collection account at Kenya Commercial Bank. If a payment fails, then transaction details and monies that is payment amount and convenience fees are retained by, uh, by, the, by payment service provider, which reverses the transaction, and e-citizen platform would be notified. The convenience fee is collected by the e-citizen platform and remitted to the e-citizen settlement account domiciled at the National Treasury. So that is the response in terms of where the convenience fee would uh, fall if, if um, the platform fails. Number three, could the cabinet secretary report on the safety, efficiency, efficacy, and reliability of the e-citizen digital payment platform in light of the numerous complaints of delays and technical issues that followed the onboarding of a significant number of government services on the platform? Mr. Speaker, again, this is my response. The e-citizen platform has witnessed tremendous growth owing to the onboarding of over 16,000 services from the previous 397 services, especially with the coming in of the new government in 2022. The services increased from 397 to 16,000. The rapid growth came with a lot of challenges to the platform, which the multi-ministerial team has been able to address. The multi-ministerial team comprises of the National Treasury, Ministry of Interior, and Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy. So far, through the Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy, as the technical, 
as, as the technology advisor and implementer, the platform information security has been built and implemented to ensure it is secure against cyber terrorism, hacking, and compromises which are likely to disrupt the provision of services to the e-citizen. The e-citizen platform has withstood several cyber attempts made by hackers with efforts arising from continuous platform vulnerability risk assessment. The multi-ministerial team has security operations center, SOC, which continuously monitors status of systems and applications and ensures any attack is responded to immediately. There were some challenges encountered during the rapid onboarding of the services. However, the e-citizen has been able to address significant portions of those challenges to stabilize the platform. Currently, the platform is very robust and has immensely improved service delivery to citizens, processing approximately 120,000 transactions daily. And Mr. Speaker, I wanted just to add that if you look at even in terms of robustness, the growth, the 2022-2023 financial year, we were able to collect only 26 million, um, 26 billion, 406 million through this platform. The following financial year, when we moved full blast to e-citizen, 2023-24, we are able to collect 100 billion, 842 million. So in one year, the collections improved from 26 billion to 100 billion. We have managed to reduce leakages in the system. Having single pay bill of triple two, triple two has worked very well and visibility of our transactions has been enhanced. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.